dear students i am talking to you today and again under the same adverse circumstances we all are at home because of this lockdown and i hope that you are staying well and you are cooperating well with your parents so our topic for today is richard steels essay recollections of childhood uh, at the very outset i would like to discuss with you about this title because when you go through the text of this essay i hope that you will also agree with my point that the title is a bit misfit because the essay is more about death recollections or memories related about death rather than about childhood yes there are certain references with regard to the childhood also but to my view to my opinion recollections on death or on the recollections of death can be a certain topic of this essay uh you know that i mean the habit of talking about the writer first so this essay is written by richard steel i hope that you remember the essays duo the famous essays duo of the 18th century edison and steel steel was born in 1672 dublin ireland and he died in the year 1729 at wales so when you try to locate the age when you try to locate and relate the age and the writer when you try to put the writer in the specific perspective of the age you must remember that steel was a neo classicist historically his whole period that is from 1672 his year of birth to 1729 his year of death this whole period of his life actually saw four kings or four monarchs you can say charles ii so when steel was born it was the time of charles ii the formative years of his steel and at that time james ii was the king then when you come to the creative period of richard steel 1695 around he begins his creative period most of his creative period till his death was under the reign of queen anne and king george when we refer to the political 
phenomena of this age, this period. It was the time of the Whigs ruling the British Parliament and the Tories were their staunch opposition. As far as the literary age is concerned, Steele experienced the restoration because he was there in 1672 and at that time the restoration period was going on and then 1700 the beginning of the Augustan age. In fact, the whole of creative period of his team covers what you, what you popularly known as the age of reason. Uh, when we talk about the influences or the forces, the literary and cultural forces of this period to which it still belong, it was neoclassicism as I said earlier and of course enlightenment. Uh, when we look at his style as a writer, when we evaluate his creative period, we basically find out that there are different dimensions, there are different aspects of creativity associated with Richard Steele. He began as a journalist. And I would not like to hesitate to say that he remained a journalist throughout his creative period. So basically at the core of his writing, at the core of his creativity, he was a journalist first. Throughout his literary career he was associated with the edition, the, 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 the publication and the editing of those very famous journals like the Tatler, the Spectator, the Guardian, reference to some other journals will come later. So he was basically, as I said, a journalist to the core. He has started writing for the London Gazette. Then he, as I said, associated himself with the Tatler, Spectator, the Guardian, the Englishman was another journal with journal with which he was associated. Another creative aspect of his steel was a dramatist. He was a dramatist and he was a very successful dramatist of his time. Altogether he wrote four very famous plays, four very famous comedies of the Augustan age, of the Augustan period. I'd like to mention two titles here, two very famous plays written by still one was the tender husband and the other was the conscious lovers students yet still was also a poet though occasional occasionally he writes poetry but he is a poet also A very famous poem that he wrote 
in the year 1695 was titled a procession a poem on the funeral of queen mary this was the complete title of that poem a procession a poem on the funeral of queen mary and it was written in 1695 when he was at the peak of his writing career around the year 1700 10 11 12 13 and 14 etc in the year 1714 he edited a collection of poems titled poetical miscellanies this version this uh, this edition of poems contained a few poems by steel also he he was as i said was a journalist to the core so he wrote a lot of political tracts one is very famous titled dunkirk considered and we see him as a philosopher also as a moral philosopher in the year 1701 a book titled the christian hero was contributed by steel as a treatise in moral philosophy but as you know that he was an essayist and certainly more than anything else i mean steel as a dramatist steel as a journalist steel as a poet steel as a writer of political tracts steel as a moral philosopher more than all these things he was an essayist and certainly a very great essayist of english literature and along with his friend edison joseph edison he had a major impact on early 18th century british sensibility students it was a time of periodical essays in england a lot of writers a lot of prose writers were writing and contributing in journals a lot of political and religious and even different kind of prose was written during this period swift was there as a very great writer at that time so steel and edison joined together and they produced a few journals one after another first they came up with the tatler which was published during 1709 and 1711 and in this journal that is the tatler steel contributed 188 periodical essays then steel and edison together published another journal called as the spectator the spectator was called was published twice one in the, in, in the year 1711 and 1712 then there was a gap the publication has stopped and then it was republished the publication began again in 1714 so in the spectator steel contributed 233 periodical essays
after the spectator addition and still together started another journal the guardian and it was during that year in which the spectator was stopped 1713 so they published another journal called the guardian still was associated with yet another journal titled the english man two series of this journal was published one was in the year 1713 and 14 and the other series was in the year 1715 friends all together still wrote more than 700 periodical essays and when you look at these periodical essays what you will find is that those periodical essays were actually short fictional accounts short fictional accounts that were based on an idea a theme or a moral concept a very interesting thing about steel and that i was talking earlier also that he was a journalist to the core and this characteristic is very much visible in his essays also in his other writings also apart from the essays and what is that steel is in the habit of inventing his stories yes steel is in the habit of inventing his stories and he is he was printing real gossip also in his journals though not like edison edison was a highly regarded essayist though less highly regarded as as edison as an essayist but still was more humane h u m a n e right so he was more humane now let us come to the essay remember the title again recollections of childhood and when you look at the essay you will find out certain highlights of the essay before i come to the highlights i would like to tell you that this particular essay recollections of childhood was published on june 6th 1710 in the tatler and it was the 181st 181th 181st issue of the tatler on june 6th 700 1710 that this essay was published yeah so coming back to the highlights of this essay let us let us underline those highlights first and then we'll talk about the essay in brief so when you will study the text it's not it's not a very long essay and you will enjoy reading it in one sitting so when you study the text three four things that you can underline that you can underline as the highlight of this essay is one is that the essay actually is a sort of a mourning about the loss of the loved ones so this is first the writer mourns the loss of the relatives the close the near and dear ones another important aspect of this essay is the brevity of human life brevity b r e v i t y so this is another very important aspect the brevity of human life pride for virtuous death is 
the third highlight which you can find out in the essay and pity for the untimely death. So when you look at the highlights, you will certainly agree to my point when I was saying that the title is a bit not justified. That out of these four highlights, one is mourning and loss of the loved ones, one is pride for the virtuous death, the other is pity for the untimely death. So it is more about death and the recollections of death. Now, why this essay? And what is the objective, what is the idea behind this essay? What is the purpose behind this essay? Still was actually emphasizing the importance of remembering through this essay. And I hope you will agree that memories, recollections, these are very important part of human life. You will also agree that memories, recollections are a very important aspect of literature also. Even memories are used as literary techniques, memories are used as narrative techniques, they are used as devices and a lot of novels, a lot of books, a lot of, lot of poems even are written by the use of, with the use of this technique, uh, memories, etc. So, when Steve was writing this essay, he had two objectives. One I said that uh, it is that he was trying to emphasize the importance of remembering. And other is that he was trying to show the grief over the death of the people whom we love. Uh, when we try to evaluate the essay in brief, the first thing that will come to your mind, any reader's mind, is that the, ref the, the essayist is actually reflecting upon the effect of death of our loved ones on our memory and on our experiences of life. So this is the first thing that will certainly appeal you in the essay, that the essayist is trying to reflect upon the, the effect of death of our near and dear ones on our memory as well as our, on our experiences of life. The essay contains very insightful reflections on life, death and human nature. So a lot of insights you can find out in your reading of the essay. A lot of insightful reflections are there on life, on death on human nature and when you try to locate this essay with reference to the age, with reference to neoclassicism and the Augustan times, you will find out that this essay contains those neoclassical ideals of balance, good sense and moral integrity. The essay actually begins with an observation and what is that observation? In the very first paragraph itself, Steele is presenting this observation that many people enjoy life 
by sharing their experiences with others. Those who are the people with an open persona, those who are extroverts, you can say. So he's talking about people who enjoy life by sharing their experiences with others. But he also says that there are some people who remain happy in keeping their things private. There are some people who remain happy in keeping their things private. Steele says that such kind of people, the introvert types, such kind of people protect their privacy in order to honor the memory of their loved ones. They want to respect the memory of their loved ones. They want to keep their memories. They want to keep those recollections that are associated with their loved ones within themselves. So that is why they try to keep their privacy intact. From this general observation, the speaker moves out to, switches over to the personal. And the speaker, the essayist, recollects about his dead ones, about his dead ones, whom he still misses. Though he says that time is a great healer and the, the effect of the loss of the dead ones has lessened, but he says that he still recollects and he still misses his near and dear ones who are no more. The speaker says that at times one must remember unhappy experiences. Look here, what he is saying? The speaker is saying that at times one must remember unhappy experiences like death. And then he says a very interesting thing. Steele says that human minds love to be excited. The mind of ours love to be excited. It wants that something, somebody, some, 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 some emotion, some memory, some feeling may stir the memories. So human minds love to be excited. Human minds like to be stirred by memories. And Steele says that unpleasant memories move the mind into that sobriety of thought which poises the heart. I would like to repeat this. Unpleasant memories move the mind into that sobriety of thought which poises the heart. And then Steele says, okay, once you understand that happiness and sorrow is a part of life, the mind gets calmer. It pacifies. It feels peace when it understands that happiness and sorrows are the part of life. And then Steele again says that one must think about his past. This is what he says. One must think about his past in order to prepare for the future. So look here that how past plays a very important role even in the framing of future. How our memories, how our recollections, how our experiences, you know, how our past plays a very important role in our preparation for the future. The speaker then recollects about his own experiences related to death, his personal experiences related to death. He recalls first the death of his father. 
he says that when he was five years old his father died he says that he was unable to understand much at that time but he can still remember the sorrow the grief of his mother he says that I was unable to understand much but by watching my mother who had a dignity in her grief is still developed a sympathetic nature he began to experience pity on the sorrows of others this is what is what happens with us also when we empathize with the people when we try to understand that the sorrows of others are the sorrows of ourselves so the, he says that okay, when he watched his mother who was behaving in a very dignified manner along with her grief he says that he began to experience pity on the sorrows of others and he says that this experience of childhood five year old he was so he says that this experience of childhood developed a sympathetic nature in him and at this point of the essay is still it refers to a very important human psychology an aspect of a very important aspect of human psychology when he was commenting about the experiences of the childhood he says and i quote the mind in infancy is like the body in embryo the mind in infancy is like the body in embryo unquote students what he is trying to say he is trying to make us understand that just like a birthmark developed inside a mother's womb remains there even after the birth of birth of the child similarly one's mind is strongly influenced by childhood experiences it is hard it is hard to remove the childhood experiences and then he says a very interesting thing a sort of an irony that he has used here at this juncture in the essay at this point in the essay and what is that he says that the quality of pity and gentleness that he had acquired from his mother do not pre prove to be practically very beneficial yes this is what he says adding an irony he says that uh, the quality of pity and gentleness that he had acquired that he had learned from his mother do not prove to be practically beneficial why because he says that he became too kind and it was easy for others to cheat him although he says for moving further in the essay he says that although because of this thing uh, i feel no sorry of being kind and sympathetic and i never leave this practice of uh i never left this practice of being kind and sympathetic to 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 to, to others do i was cheated time and again because of this the speaker then says that people feel a great sense of loss when any untimely death happens so when he was talking about the death of his father when he was 5 year old now he is talking about an untimely death of any young one 
so he says that people feel a great sense of loss on the untimely death of the young ones and he says that life may seem very burdensome but yet we feel sorry when death takes away the burden of life so if anybody dies even in utter hopelessness if anybody dies even in utter misery and trouble people say that this is not good he died very young so it is possible that life is life was very burdensome but it still we feel sorry if anybody dies young moving ahead in the essay steel says that people feel a great sorrow on the death of a young soldier so look here this is the this is the third time that he is referring to a death and now he is talking about the death of a young soldier and he says that on the death of a young soldier people think that the young man could have lived a long happy life had he not been a soldier friends at this juncture i would like to tell you a very interesting thing and that is about soldiering about military about army about fighting for the nation about patriotism about nationalism the next essay that i'll be talking about will be on will be an essay by swift titled on national prejudices and if you can remember bernard shaw that very famous play arms and the man there also he talked a lot about soldiering fighting for the nation sacrificing life for the nation so still at this juncture when he was talking about the death of a young soldier and when he says that the people are greatly grieved when they heard about the death of a young soldier and they say that the young man could have lived a long happy life had he not been a soldier at this juncture dear students he takes he says a very interesting thing and this can be taken as a very important statement he says that young soldiers have to sacrifice themselves for the political ambition of the leaders isn't it interesting this is not simply interesting dear friends this is very thought provoking that young soldiers have to sacrifice themselves for the political ambition of their leaders anyways let us move ahead to the essay uh, the next part of the essay where we are basically coming towards the end of the essay and in this part is still talks about the untimely death of his beloved and this will appear very interesting to you look here how he reacts and how he reflects upon this death of his the untimely death of his beloved on this untimely death of his beloved he exclaims that why death is so cruel to his beloved he recollects that in the same week when he saw the beloved dressed for a ballad 
he saw her dressed in a shroud also so in the same week once he saw his beloved dressed for a ballad and in the same week later he saw his beloved dressed in a shroud at this point daisy becomes very poignant it becomes very emotional and you will find a deep anguish there you may feel also the deep anguish that is there in that essay but soon you know that he was a neoclassicist and a writer who belongs to the age of reason a writer for whom emotions and sentimentalism was not a very important thing these are the things for the romantics to do so very soon he gets out of this and he moves on to his objective self once again and abruptly he ends the essay saying that he has to get together to his friend so he is going he has to this, yes this is what he says he has to go to his friends so there is a get together with his friend so he is going so at this juncture the essay ends now let us attempt a quick analysis what is the first point of the analysis thematic analysis so as i said earlier the essay is presenting different aspects of death the death of the father the death of the young ones the death of the young soldier and the untimely death of the beloved then there is a blending when you will read the text you will find out that there is a blending of anecdotes realistic observations and intelligent reflections so these three things are put together personal anecdotes are there realistic observations are there and reflections very intelligent reflections are there when you look at the methodology that is used in this essay two very interesting thing about the methodology that is used in this essay one is that the same parallelism the use of parallelism so parallelisms are used to structure and organize the major ideas in the essay but more than parallelism the most important method methodology that you will certainly notice is the use of personal pronouns and these personal pronouns are used to show a closeness to show a unity with the reader the style of the essay is very conversational the language is very conversational but refined language is used so you can say that it is converse conversational yet refined though death is the focus of attention but there is no what you can say there is no there is not there is there, there, there is not too much of sentimentalism is there that is there but the tone is not too much sentimental humor is used irony has been used and the author changes the tone according to the situation the author changes the tone according to the situation the diction that is used in the essay is quite simple 
but it is emotionally very strong and why the emotion why the diction is emotionally very strong with the purpose to develop a personal passionate involved and a very contemplative tone you should also notice the use of metaphor in this essay one very important metaphor which is used is the metaphor of a clock which is used to view human life which is used to present the, uh, and view a human life you can also notice element of iron in human as i mentioned earlier and to conclude i would again attract you or your attention towards this fact that this essay is actually a very remarkable example of drawing universal insights from the personal experiences so look what the author has done he refers to the anecdotes taken from his life taken from his surrounding and those anecdotes are wrapped up in intelligent reflections and very realistic observations so it is a very remarkable essay in this aspect that universal insights are drawn from personal experiences thank you very much